Welcome to St. Timothy Lutheran Church for this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. We're so glad that you could join us once more for our online worship. And today we hear another story about bread. Jesus is talking to us about bread, but this isn't just any ordinary bread. This is bread that will last forever. Can that be true? Those words are almost too good to be true. So what does Jesus mean when he talks about this bread that comes from heaven and gives us life? Well, we will explore that through our readings, through our preaching, and through our worship and song. So come with us and be fed by Jesus, who is our bread of life. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Trusting in God's promises of forgiveness, we confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our Creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we still were sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. Let us pray. O God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. Good morning. It's time for the children's sermon, and today I brought a loaf of bread. And when I see a loaf like this, I always, and I really mean this, I always think of places I visited years ago where there was no bread or very little bread or anything to eat at all. Because often I travel to places where maybe there was a war or a terrible famine, and I was there to write stories about what was happening. And I would talk to the people, and so many of them, they had to flee and run away from their homes because there was fighting or there was no food. And they took what little they had and, and they ran, looking for places where they might be safe and where there might be bread, because this was life. This kept them alive to meet the challenges of each new day. But there was something else that always impressed me. It moved me. Sometimes it made me cry. Because sometimes there'd be very little bread to share among a family or the people along the road but they would take some of their bread and maybe there would be a pastor or a leader who would take some of the bread and they would gather by the bushes and sit on the ground and they would break apart the bread and they would pray and they would celebrate and sing prayers and praises to Jesus and they would celebrate and bless the bread and they would share it in Holy Communion and say, 
This is the body of Christ for you. They would take the bread and share it. Even though they had very little, they would use it to celebrate Holy Communion because they knew something. They knew even though bread was life, they knew they needed another bread that was the love and the presence of Jesus holding them all together, strengthening them to share and support and care for one another so that they might have the strength to go on. For you see, we don't just need bread to live. We need the bread of life that is Jesus, his love. He is that bread that gives our spirits and our hearts life. I hope you feel and know that life today. See you soon. The first reading is from the fourth chapter of Ephesians, beginning at the first verse. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also had descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all has come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell, him, tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has sent his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then? so that we may see it and believe you. What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, that is, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, 
Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In a world of sell-by dates and preservatives, what does it mean for Jesus to offer us food that doesn't perish, but endures for eternal life? In a world where children still go hungry and food ministries our church provides to Hesed House and Mill Street Cares are still a necessity in our community. What does it mean for Jesus to say that whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty? It would be easy to write Jesus' statements off as mere poetry or at best a food-related metaphor. We might catch ourselves thinking that Jesus is only speaking symbolically. I mean, all of us have probably cleaned out our fridges and found that one cucumber that is rolled to the back and forgotten there only to turn into some sort of science experiment. Or gone into the freezer and gotten that tub of ice cream that's been there for who knows how long and tried to scrape the freezer burn off just for a bite or two. If you're anything like me, you know that keeping food forever, it's an impossibility. So what does Jesus mean? What is the reality of this food that never goes bad and gives life to the world? And if what Jesus says is true, then then we should indeed say, as the disciples do, Jesus, give us this bread always. As Lutherans, we confess that the food Jesus is talking about that comes from heaven is no metaphor. The food that Jesus gives to us that satisfies our, our deepest hungers is not just mere poetry. And when we come to the table of mercy each week to receive this bread of life and cup of salvation, we, what we find in our hands is not just a symbol. After all, in First Communion, we teach children that this isn't just ordinary bread and wine, but that God's promise and very real tangible life is placed into their hands. In confirmation, we recite that the old catechetical axiom that the true body and blood of Jesus Christ are indeed under the bread and wine. As a congregation, each week we pray that the Holy Spirit descends upon us and that this meal should be for us the true body and blood of Christ. And yet, At the grocery store, when we buy our milk, we always get the one with the the furthest away expiration date, right? Because we know, we know that food cannot do the types of things that Jesus is claiming that they do in our gospel story today. Or can it? Can this food that Jesus speaks of be real? Perhaps it depends on how you, how you answer the two following questions. Question number one. Is love real? Well, is it? I mean, it is, right? And yet love isn't something we can buy or sell, hold or set down. Love isn't something that we rely on our five senses to notice or acquire. You can't measure love or prove it in some sort of mathematical theorem that certifies its existence. For love to be love, it neither runs out nor has a sell-by date. I mean, sure, we can 
fall out of love, or love can change, but just because it ebbs and flows does not invalidate its existence. And here, here's my second question. It's definitely harder than the first. You ready? Is bread real? You know, flour, yeast, water, maybe a little salt, oil, sugar. Of course it is. But don't just take it from me because I'm a pastor giving a sermon, but take it from me because I come from a long line of bakers. My mom's dad, my grandfather was a baker. And not just a guy who liked to bake cupcakes for a church picnic. Curtis Reed owned his own bake shop, Reed's Bakery. And his father, my great-grandfather, owned that bakery, too. And with this being the case, our family took bread and donuts and pies and cakes and all assortment of baked goods and really food in general very seriously. When I would go over to mow my, my grandparents' yard, I'd often come home with a, with a pie. When birthdays rolled around, the cake never came from the store. Holidays became baking sprees. At Christmas time alone, my grandpa would bake a never-ending supply of cookies and pies and cakes, and homemade candies, and chocolates. The fruits of his labors would fill, fill two full tables in the living room. And family and friends would constantly stop by the reeds to help themselves from the abundance. Oh, friends, a childhood of sweets and pies and homemade bread was amazing. And it also taught me just how real bread is. Thirteen years ago, though, my, my, gran my grandma Reed died, and Grandpa had to move into an assisted living home. And while he was slowed by age and health, he still found a way to bake a holiday fruitcake for almost every resident in the place. But after three years... He passed away too. And for a decade now, I, I haven't had a slice of Grandpa's famous shoe fly pie or a big piece of a birthday cake he made just for me. You know, one doesn't make a fortune as a humble baker with an inner city bakery. And my, gran my Grandpa was no exception. And yet he and my Grandma, they made a wonderful life together and lived in a fantastically charming little home. All that to say, when, when we went through their things after Grandpa died, there was no mistaking what the most valuable inheritance was. It was, un, it was an unremarkable three-ring binder, which was ready to burst at the seams. It was my grandparents' recipe book. And to call it a book perhaps paints too quaint of an image. I mean, this was a tome. It was page after page after page of recipes. Most handwritten in my grandmother's impeccable handwriting. I mean, there are still times when I call my parents and I say, hey, can you dig out my grandpa's put pie recipe? Or what about his sand tarts? Which, if you don't know, that's a very Pennsylvania Dutch type of Christmas cookie. And when I bake those cookies, what happens next is very real. As real as the smell of cinnamon sugar wafting through the kitchen or that pie that's cooling on the counter. What happens is that I experience his love. I mean, what I miss most about my grandpa is not actually the bread or the smells in the kitchen, but I miss his life. The life he poured out for me, his grandson. 
I miss him sitting with my grandma at my baseball games. I miss him, take, I miss him taking me out to see his vegetable garden. I miss him playfully ribbing me at the dinner table until I eat one of the spiciest peppers that's on the relish tray, just making my mouth go on fire. And this is not just a reminder or a remembrance or a symbol or a metaphor for my grandpa. What I'm experiencing each time I bake a loaf of bread is his love, which in death is just as strong as it was in life. I can point to the tangible things in my life, the person I've become, my own love of cooking. For bread is real and so is love. And they've changed who I am, affected my life in tangible ways. And if this is the case for little old Curtis Reed, born in Allentown, Pennsylvania, the son of a baker and a loving grandfather, how much more will it be for the Son of God? And so each time we eat this bread and drink this wine, it is not just a remembrance or a symbol or a metaphor, but the actual, real, tangible love of God being poured into our lives, changing who we are for all eternity. Food perishes, and so even do our lives. But love, the love of grandparents, and most definitely the love of Jesus. As long as we eat this bread, we will be fed forever. Amen. Christ, sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. A holy one, time and time and again, you call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together, restore the unity of our faith. Make this congregation a place of hospitality and welcome in the name of Christ. Hear us, O God. 
O Holy One, you command the clouds above and cause the wind to blow in the heavens. Sustain those places in this world that have suffered from natural disaster. Bring rain where there is drought. Conserve those places that are being ravaged by fire. Protect us, O Lord. Make us good stewards of all that you have made. Hear us, O God. It is you who summons leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of all. Hear us, O God. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry. Reassure those who are despairing. Accompany those who are ill of any kind. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world, especially this day. We ask for your comfort and healing to be upon Bob Borg, Joni Berkeley, Wilhelm Lintz, and Larry Hansler. Hear us, O God. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we too are gathered with all the saints and feast together at your heavenly banquet. Until that day, give us here on earth a foretaste of the feast yet to come. Hear us, O God. We lift these in all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together with joy and hope, we celebrate the Holy Eucharist, where our Lord Jesus Christ gives us his own body and blood under the forms of bread and wine. 
for our forgiveness, eternal life, and salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we at all times and in all places should give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opens to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. You have made a universe in which you take delight, delighting too our senses with its colors, its textures, its life and immensity. In great love also you sent to us Jesus our brother, your son. He reached out to heal the sick and suffering, preaching good news to the poor, and on the cross he opened his arms in your divine embrace to all that is and all we are. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink from this, all of you, for this is the cup of a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, and this for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to remember me. Remembering, therefore, our Lord's death, resurrection, and ascension, we await that day when, O oh Lord, your kingdom will come and your will is done on earth as it is in heaven, and you fill all creation with your grace and glory even as the water covers the sea. Until that great and holy day, continue to pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O oh Lord, Unite our wills with the wills of all who share in this heavenly food, which is the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit belong all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. We pray together in hope the prayer that our Lord Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Lord Jesus Christ invites us now to come to this table to taste and see the goodness of the Lord. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ, which is shed for you.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, once again, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, strengthen us now to love the world with your own life and with your own love. In your name we pray, amen. Receive now the Lord's blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and walks with us every step of our journey. May this loving Lord shower his grace upon you and be with you now and forevermore. And this, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, friends. Thanks for joining us for our online worship service. Hey, I wanted to tell you about a few things before you leave. Um, we had such a wonderful time last Sunday in the backyard having a pet blessing with all of your wonderful, they were all dogs, all the wonderful dogs that came to visit with us. So if you can hang online a little bit longer, we'll show you some highlights following this worship video of some of the special times we had with your pets. Also, um, thank you everyone who helped once again with our Hasid House ministry. It was a great success again, as always. So thank you one and all. For, for your help with that. Um, also, the blood drive is coming up August 8th, so if you have an opportunity and can come donate blood, I know it's that summertime and the, the need is great. So if you can help us with that, that would be wonderful. So I think that's all we have for this week. So until next week, to everyone, take good care. Stay safe, bye-bye. People of God, what are we called to do? Live the love of Christ. Go in peace to serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God.